Hey friends, it's Ruben with Hi-Fi MIDI. I got an email from a subscriber. They sent me a link to a song called Lonely Night by Korean artist Ben. I can't show it on here because YouTube will copyright strike it. But he asked, how can I recreate with Ample Guitar Martin the exaggerated strumming noise that happens in minute 122 through 136? It seems like the only thing that sounds is a noise and not the notes. So I know what he's talking about whenever you hear more of the stroke noise. So it sounds more like a percussion instrument rather than a guitar. Ample sound guitars don't have this function where you can just eliminate most of the tone, but there are several tricks that you can use. And I'm going to give this example. Uh, I'm going to play this little loop here. It's very simple. Um, now we're going to try to get that guitar sound. One important thing to know is the limitations of the software. It's not going to recreate it exactly the way it sounds with a real acoustic guitar, but it's going to get pretty dang close. Uh, so the first thing, since he's using AGM, I'm going to use AGM. I would recommend using the strum library because that's going to give you more of that strum sound. It's going to use a pick, but it's going to emphasize that percussive sound. Next, go into your effects, take off any delay that it may have, and set your reverb size to the smallest because what I heard on the track sounded pretty dry, but you don't want it to be too dry. Next, this was in the key of F sharp. Make sure that it's in select mode, not detect mode. So here's select mode where you can have a chord bank. And then we're gonna select plus six because plus seven is gonna put this in the key of G, plus five is gonna put this in the key of F, so F sharp would be plus six. Make sure that you turn strum mode on. So I can either strum it with my keyboard, or I can use the strum buttons here to listen to the sound. Next, we're gonna copy the chords. The first chord is D sharp minor, I believe to B major, to F sharp major, to C sharp major. Now if we go back in here, since we've already set the key, we need to figure out the key switches for those chord changes. F sharp is C1, D sharp minor is A1, B major is F1, and C sharp major is G1. So we're going to cycle through those four. Now I'm going to click on my MIDI region that I created, zoom in, and the first beat is going to be D sharp minor, which is A1. You can see it right here. So we're going to click in that key switch. The next one is going to be B major, which is on F1. And these are all starting on the first beat of each measure. The next one is going to be F sharp major, which is C1. It's good practice to write this down. And then finally, we have a C sharp major, which is going to be G1. Now, you're not going to hear anything because these are simply chord changes. There's no strumming going on yet. Next, we're going to create a strum pattern, and I have my grid set to eighth notes. One, two, and three, and one, two, and three. So this is going to be my strum pattern. One, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and one. It's normal to use a downstroke on the strong beats. So I'm gonna have one, two, and is gonna be an upstroke. Three is gonna be a downstroke, and the and of three is gonna be an upstroke. Let's just listen to this really quick. I'm going to copy and paste it, but I'm going to edit these afterward. All 
All right, so you can clearly hear a lot of the pitch there. One thing I tend to do is to lower the upstroke volume. I want it to be softer than the downstrokes. Next, I'm going to select the downstroke on beat 3 of every measure. I'm holding it on command and clicking. And I'm going to lower the velocity of those notes just a little bit. I'm going to select all of them and I want this to be pretty quiet. So maybe a piano, piano dynamic. Next, I'm going to open up Ample Guitar Martin and I'm going to set the stroke volume all the way up. You can back this off if it sounds too loud for you. It's okay. It's all a matter of how it sounds good to your ear. I can still hear a lot of the pitch. So I'm going to go back in. Another trick is to double it. When you double it, it widens the sound and you're going to hear a lot of that stroke noise on the sides. So the piano is the main instrument on this and the guitar is just providing that rhythm in the background. So I want that stroke noise to be heard on the sides. So by doubling it, it creates that stereo image and you're going to hear more of that stroke noise. Next, I'm going to go into my effects menu, go to my EQ, and it already has a, a high pass filter on here. And this is good the way that's set. You don't want the guitar's bass notes competing with the bass or the piano's bass notes. But um, what I'm going to do is cut out some of the mid range notes because the piano's already taking up those chords. So I'm going to double click somewhere here in the middle, maybe around 700. And then I'm going to start bringing that down. And what you want to do is just loop this section. And just have it play over and start cutting out some of those middle frequencies so that it sounds like the tone is fading away. Next, I'm going to cut out some of the high frequencies because the piano is already playing these higher frequencies. And if I add the guitars, it's just going to add to it and make it sound a little bit louder. So I'm going to double click right here. Make sure that I'm selecting the high cut filter. And I don't want to bring this too far back, but I'm going to play it and just cut it out so that I do have detail, but it's not competing with the piano. Lastly, I want to take out some of that nasal quality of the guitar. So I'm going to go up here to about 5K and start taking some of that out as well. So I double click to create a new node, and then I'll start EQing it out. Now the volume seems a little too low, so I'm going to go to the compressor, turn that on, set my auto gain. Now the compressor is supposed to reduce the volume of a sound beyond a certain point. And then I'm going to lower this threshold and then raise the ratio. <laughs> 
That way, it's, it's, a, it's playing at a soft dynamic, but it sands out a little bit. Now this is starting at 35 milliseconds into the sample, so I'm going to bring this all the way to zero. That way it gets that initial pick sound. But because of that, there's going to be some latency. So I'm going to go to my MIDI insert and adjust the MIDI delay to 35, negative 35. I'm going to go ahead and Copy and paste this. I'll fix the end in just a little bit. Let's hear that. Friends, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And if you're not a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can be up to date with my latest videos. Leave a comment below, tell me what you thought about this. If you wanna download these tracks, I'll have it on my website in my course so you can follow along and work on this project yourself.